We read this morning by way of introduction on this thought of Christ is all I need. We read in chapter 1, verse number 6, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And we gave a few other things concerning this book, the book of Philippians. Our general theme, our central lesson is that there is joy even in the midst of tribulation. Thank God we can have joy as we're living this life. Even in trials and troubles, we can still be joyous Christians, and that's what we ought to be as saints of God. And so when we looked at this this morning, uh, we covered several other things in the introduction. I'll bypass that, but I will give you that quote again that I gave from Corey Ten Boom uh, concerning this thought of Christ is all we need. And she made the quote many years ago, and it's uh, been put out in a written form. And here's the quote, you may never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. Very true statement, very true statement from this dear saint of God. And uh, we looked this morning in chapter 1 and verse number 21 as our key thought as we looked at Christ my life. I thought I was going to get further in the message, but that's where we ended up, Christ my life. Paul realized that Christ was his life. In life, in death, he said there's still gain with Jesus Christ. And of course, we gave you several thoughts concerning this, this thought of Christ, my life. Uh, since he is our life, I'm not ashamed, I'm not afraid, and not alone uh, since I have Christ, my life. And we dealt with that and we came down to this second thought. And I will, I will make a couple of more, uh, I, I guess, notes before we get into the second main point of this message. And that is, if Christ is your life, you got a comfort in Jesus. If Christ is your life, you got a companion in the Lord. If Christ is your life, you've got a counselor and a close and continuing friend who will be there in every situation of your life, no matter what you're going through. I'm glad Jesus is always there with us. Uh, you say, well, preacher, sometimes I don't feel like the Lord's with me. He's still there. He's promised us in his word, no matter what we're going through, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Aren't you glad of that tonight? And so we ought to give him praise. And I thought about this uh, when I was uh, uh, going through this this morning and, and, of course, preparing this message and came up to this point. The Bible said in Acts 17, 28, he said, For in him we live, we move, and have our being, a portion of that verse, Acts 17, 28, for in him we live, he is our life, we move, he is our way of life, and he is our being. So Christ is our purpose in living as Christians. I say this again, when I realized that, that Christ was my life, everything in my life changed. As I, I tried to demonstrate that this morning, uh, through what I said, everything in my life changed when I realized, when I totally surrendered my life to Christ, how that my life changed completely. And so we see this thought, not only Christ, my life, turn to chapter 2 now. In chapter 2, let's look at verse number 5. Not only is Christ my life, Paul said, but Christ is also my mind. Think about that. My mind, Christ my mind. Verse number 5, the Bible said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Where Christ, our life, He is the purpose of our living in every aspect of our life. When you think about Christ my mind, He is the pattern of our living. He's my purpose because He's my life. But He's my pattern as far as Christ being my mind. You see, when Christ changes your life, He'll change your mind. He'll change your thinking. Can you agree with that tonight? Things will, things will be different in your thought process. And so when we think about this thought, let this mind be in you. We need to experience the mind of Christ. Well, what is the mind of Christ? If you read these verses as we'll uh, look at them in just a moment, you'll find that Christ and the mind of Christ was that of an obedient, humble mind. And that's exactly what Christ had. He had that humble, obedient mind. And let me say something to you as a Christian. That ought to be your goal in life. Before I gave Christ my life and realized he was my life, I thought everything I did was okay. I was in control of my life. I owned my life. 
I own my body. But when I got saved, friend, when you, when, you, when you became a Christian, when you received Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body's not your own. Your life's not your own. Oh, wait a minute, preacher. I'm in control of all of this. Well, we, now, we can say that. Well, what you're doing is you're kicking against God. Because the Bible tells us that we've been, when we get saved, we've been bought with a what? A price. And he died for us. And so we ought to live for him. And so Christ is our life. And Christ not only is our life, uh, he, he's the purpose of our living, but he's our mind. He's, and Paul said, Paul said, everything about me and my thinking has completely changed. You go back to the book of Acts in your mind. You remember the teaching and preaching through Acts? Before he came to Christ, before the, uh, the Damascus Road experience in Paul's life, he was Saul of Tarsus. God changed his name to Paul the Apostle. Hallelujah, thank God. There was a change in his life. What was he doing? He was persecuting Christians. But after, after Christ became his life, it changed his thinking. He didn't want to persecute Christians. He was one. He was living for Christ. And so when Christ becomes our life, he must also become our mind. And Paul said, let this mind be in you. What kind of mind? The mind of Christ, which was a humble, obedient mind. And when we learn the mind of Christ, we can live the mind of Christ. Think about that. When you learn about him, you can begin to live that life, the mind of Christ, walking in the same spirit and the same steps of our Lord, being willing to humble ourselves before the Lord. And God said it's our responsibility that we do humble ourselves before him. So we give ourselves totally. Let this mind be in you. I like what Acts chapter 20 and verse 19 says. It said, serving the Lord with all humility of mind. I can remember in my rebellious years before I surrendered my heart to the Lord and, and in my thinking, <laughs> I can remember the way I thought. As I said, everything was about me. It wasn't about anybody else. It was just about me. We've got a lot of folks thinking that way today. It's all about me. Come on. That's the way this world system works. It's, it's all about me, what I can do uh, before you do it. All right, what, how, if I can get over on you, then I, I've done my part in life. And so when you think about Christ, my life, and then Christ, my mind, he's our purpose of living. He's our pattern of thinking and living. And so when you think about that, you change. I can remember uh, an incident in my life when I was rebellious and not doing right. And my mother came in one time and, and, and she was trying to get my attention and wanting to talk to me. And I was a big boy. Uh, at that time, and just a teenage boy, I, I, you know, I was 13, man. I thought I was bad to the bone. <laughs> and I can remember mom came in, and she said something, and I, I kind of smarted off in a certain way, and, man, I just like, you know, hey, get out of here. Don't mess with me. And I never have forgotten that. It's still, I can remember. I can see it in my mind's eye right now, and I'm very sorry for acting that way. But, you see, my thinking wasn't right. See, I had a wrong thought process. If my, my life wasn't right, my thinking wasn't right, because Christ was not my life, and he surely wasn't my mind. But when things changed and I surrendered to the Lord, never one time again I ever did that to my mother. She didn't have to tell me to get up. I got up on my own. She didn't have to remind me about church. I beat her to church. Come on now. You say, why? Because my whole thinking process changed. You see, you, you, you think, of, and we, we sometimes, we look at young people and we say, well, if they'll just get right with God and they'll just do right, how about some adults getting right with God and doing right too? So don't blame it all on the kids. We got some adults, they think in their own life. They're, they're living their own life. They got their own purpose in living. They got their own pattern of way of going. You see, Paul said, he said, I've realized that Christ is my life. And not only is my life, he is my mind. So I'm serving the Lord with all humility of mind, Acts 20 in verse number, number 19. That means you become obedient to the parents. Amen? Uh, I became obedient not only to my parents, to, but to my preacher. <laughs> and then the plan of God for my life. Well, Lord, whatever you want now. See, it's not, it's not me anymore. It's all about Jesus. See, that changes the whole aspect of living. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, Paul said this in verses 5 and 6. Listen to it. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's what it's all about. My pattern changed. My thinking changed. My whole life changed. Can I have an amen? Christ had that obedient, humble mind. Our minds, as I said, it involves our thinking. And when, I, when, I, when Christ is not our life, when he is not our mind, I say this to you, our thinking is not right. I want to emphasize that again. If you've got somebody that you're trying to deal with in life, I don't know whether it's a family member or a friend, it makes no difference who it is in life. It could be a spouse. It could be children, whatever. It could be anyone. If you're dealing with an individual and you realize, you say, man, and you come away from that and you say, boy, they're just not thinking right. They're not thinking right. They're not making good decisions. You say, what's wrong? Christ is not their mind. They don't have that humble, obedient mind. They don't have the mind of Christ. They're not thinking about Christ in their decision making. Everything that they're doing is quite opposite from what the Bible said and what God said, what thus saith the Lord. And so their mind, their thinking's not right. When your thinking's not right, let me say something. When your thinking's not right, you'll try to rationalize sin. When your thinking's not right, you'll rationalize sin. When your thinking is not right in your own life, you, you, you'll begin to rate sin. R-A-T-E, rate sin. You say, what, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, this sin's not as bad as this one. You not only rationalize it, but you'll rate it. You'll say, well, well, I can go here and do this, but it's not quite as bad. Maybe the preacher won't say anything about that. Maybe God won't get me on that one. Sin is sin. Doesn't make any difference how big it or how little it is. Come on now. All sin is the same, see. And he said sin. So you'll, you'll not only rationalize sin when you think it's not right, but when Christ is not your mind, you'll rate sin. Oh, that's not as bad to do this. I'll do a little bit of this or a little bit of that. It's all sin. You'll not only rationalize it and then you'll rate sin, but hey, you will forget uh, in your life to remove that sin and you'll refuse to remove it from your life. But when you truly surrender your life, when, you're, when your lifestyle changes, your mindset will change as well. Uh, your, your love will change. Your longing in life will change. Your outlook and your look on life will change. We need to experience, church, the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. That humble, obedient mind. Not only do we need to experience the mind of Christ, but we need to examine the mind of Christ. Look at verses 6 and 7 of chapter 2. The Bible said, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Why? Because he was God. He didn't say I'm stepping out of bounds by doing what I'm doing. I'm God. But the Bible said in verse number 7, what did he do? He left the throne of glory to come to this earth, be born of a virgin in Bethlehem. He lived and he was living to die on the old rugged cross. The Bible said that he humbled himself. Notice this here. He made himself of no reputation, but he took upon the form of a servant a servant, and was made in the likeness of what? Men. So in every sense of the word, you know, here's, here, here's a man in every sense of the word, the God man, but in every sense of the word also he's God. He's God who took upon a body of flesh, John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh, that's Jesus. He took upon this body of flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You see, he said, I don't think myself to be guilty of any invasion of this because he said back in John chapter 10 in the Gospels, he said, I and my Father are one. So he said, I don't think it no bad thing. But the Bible said he humbled himself. He took himself, took upon the body of flesh, made himself that way to become a servant, that one which was an obedient, humble mind. And so when we follow the man of Christ in these verses, we too must live that life which is a life of humility. So we experience his mind. We examine his mind. Look at verse number 8. We exemplify his mind and the ministry of Christ. The Bible said being found in fashion as a man. What happened to him? He humbled himself. Voluntarily, he humbled himself and became, here it is, here's the mind of Christ, obedient Unto death, even the death of the cross. I say to you now, as a child of God, God gave us a free will. God made us who we are. Aren't you glad of that? Hallelujah. You're beautiful in the eyes of God. Why? Because you're his creation. 
God made you just like you are. But when you become His, and you're bought with that price, and you become, not only you realize that Christ's my life, and then Christ ought to be my mind. He's my thinking. He's my mind. And that obedient life, that humble life, we ought to realize that we need to live a humble life. We've got, we got too many folks with a lot of pride in their life. We need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. The Bible said like this in Proverbs 16, 19. He said, better is it to be in a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. In Proverbs 29 and 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. James said it like this. He said, we ought to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift, lift you up. So there's the humility of Christ. And his, hey, listen, Christ did not only humble himself in words, but he humbled himself in action. He became obedient. He, the Bible said he laid down his life. He laid down his life for you. Uh, what, what an obedient, humble mind to the Father's will. God said, God said, I've got to send my son to be the propitiation for your sins, to be that supreme sacrifice that you might have. And he humbled himself. You remember in the garden, he prayed. He said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. He knew it was coming. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Aren't you glad of that? He was willing to humble himself. And so Christ is not only my life. Paul said, Christ is my mind. He'll, 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 he'll change your thinking uh, in, your, in your life. Everything in my life, as I said, changed. My thinking changed completely. Uh, since, I, since I surrendered my life to Christ, I don't think the same anymore. I just want to think about what he wants in my life. Let me give you the third one. Go to chapter 3. Not only is Christ my life, he is my mind, but he's also my goal. Paul said in chapter 3, verse 14, look at it now. He said, as, as, as Christ is my purpose in life, because he is my life. He's my pattern of life because he's my mind. Notice here, he said, he's my prize in life. Hallelujah. The goal line. Christ's my goal. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul learned, and you will learn, and you should know about. He's not only our purpose, our pattern, but he's our prize. You see, hey, listen, I'm glad I learned a long time ago that pleasure is not my prize in life. <laughs> popularity is not necessarily my prize in life. Uh, the things of pleasure and popularity and possessions and positions in life, but it is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my goal. I used to love a lot of things in life and do a lot of things, and I still like things to do. But there were some times in my life that I gave up certain things because I knew I just shouldn't be there. It wasn't for me. It wasn't anything harmful, sinful, but it just wasn't for me. And I said, Lord, if you're going to be my, if you're going to be my life, you're going to be my mind, you're also going to be my goal in life. Everything that you do, career-wise, let me say something, career-wise, you ought to ask God what you ought to do. I want to do all this, and I want to do all that. But hey, listen, it wasn't what God wanted me to do. And so you ought to seek after him. Not only Christ your life, Christ your mind, but Christ your goal. When I surrendered my life to the Lord, and I go back to that because that's what changed my life. When I surrendered my life to the Lord, and Christ became my mind, like Paul was talking about, my purpose of life. And then uh, he, he became my mind, my life, and, and, and then now my goal, everything I strive for. And God began to reveal to me the things that he wanted me to do. And he called me to preach at age 14. I so I was asking uh, our dear brothers, as he had a birthday, and Bryson, and I was asking, well, how old are you? And he told me, I'm 14. He's lying right in the church already, but 13. I think he said 13, right? He started, I was looking at him and I said, you know, it wasn't but a year later, God called me to preach. God, God impressed on my heart as a 14-year-old boy. You said, you can't know at 14. I'm going to tell you what, as I said this morning, a lot of these kids know a whole lot more than you think they know. You need to give them a little bit of credit. But I was 14 years old and I got on my knees and I, I never forget, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I've made a mess and Lord, I need you to take my life and Lord, I've done all these things and I was sick and tired of that lifestyle. 
I was, I was afraid, as I said this morning, I was afraid to even die in my sleep. I said, Lord, if I die in my sleep, I'll die not right with you. And there's fear in my heart. But when I got right that morning, I said, Lord, you take my life. I went back to school. 14 years old. It didn't make me no different except I was right with the Lord. Trying to live right. You say, well, well did you become a wimp? No, somebody messed with me. I punch them in the nose still. I'd have to ask forgiveness later, but I still punch them in the nose. I'm just teasing. But I'm just saying, it didn't change. It didn't change who I was as far as my physical appearance and uh, it, didn't, it didn't change. It didn't take anything away from me. It added to my life. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it added to my life. I had a greater outlook on life because he was my life. He was my mind. And then he became my goal in life. I said, God's called me to preach. And I surrendered to that and knew that God had changed my life. And I want to tell you what, from that day, I knew, I knew the ultimate goal. There was a lot of things that happened I didn't always do right. Just like, just like most of all of us, we've had our ups and downs in life. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> but, I, but God had changed me so that I knew the ultimate goal. Either I'd go God's way or God had put me in the ground. I believed that. And he became my goal. Everything I wanted to do, I started writing out and trying to write out outlines and trying to keep notes from the preacher. I'd say, as he is preaching, I'd write down about everything I could. And, and I'd, I'd write it down. I've looked back over a lot of my notes and, and I said, man, I can't believe I wrote those things down, you know. All these misspelled words. I looked last week and still saw some misspelled words I wrote last week too. But anyway, <laughs> but I just, you know, I mean, I'd write those things down. I'd write in that Bible and he'd say, he'd say to us, Put this down in the Word of God so the devil don't chew it up and, and take it away from you. And I'd write it down. I've got sayings all in my Bible that the preacher made down through those years. And, and we printed up a page for our Bible Institute students years ago. Uh, 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 quotable quotes by uh, Dr. Maccabee. And we, we put that in, in a little piece of paper and different quotes I had written in my Bible. Quotes like, you'll live right if you're a Christian or you won't live long. Other quotes that he had given down through the years and statistics that he had given. You say, why? Because everything now was my goal in life had changed. Some people's goal is to be a millionaire. I'm already one. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't know it, but I am. If you're saved, you're a millionaire too. Amen. You got more than what riches can buy if you got Jesus. Christ my life. He's my purpose. Christ, my mind. He's my pattern. Christ, my goal. He's my prize. Hallelujah. And God has helped me to understand that. He was my prize in life. Paul knew how that he would have to relinquish his past. He had to give up some things. He gave up that lifestyle of persecution, per, persecuting the Christians. I had to relinquish my past. I had to give up some things. There were some people I ran with I had to give up. Couldn't run with them anymore. You say, why? Because they lived a life of sin. They weren't living right. You say, well, you thought you was better than them? No, I just right with God and I didn't want to get caught doing nothing. My life had changed. My mind had changed. My prize or goal had changed. And then also not only did he relinquish the past, he said in those verses, he said, if you read in those verses, we just read some of them uh, right prior to that, he said, forgetting the things, forgetting some things in the past. I'm reaching forward. I'm pressing forward to the mark, to that goal. So he had to reach forth for the purpose and with a purpose to gird it up. And then he said, I'm running. I'm pressing. I'm going toward that goal. What is my goal? It's Jesus Christ. What is my prize? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm running for the prize. So I, I have to give up some things, gird up some things, and get through some things. His head was thrust forward, his heart was thoroughly fixed, and his hands were tightly fastened upon those things that God wanted for him. Why? Because Christ was his goal. He had a made-up mind. He had a, he had a sold-out heart, and he had busy hands for the work of the Lord. The goal was not to please self, but to live, but to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Things will change in your life. Let me give you the fourth one, chapter 4, and we're done. Christ is not only my life, that's my purpose of life. Christ is my mind, that's my pattern. Christ my goal, that's my prize. But thank God, He's not only, that, not only those things, but He's Christ my strength. He's the believer's power in living. The believer's power in living. You say, preach, I don't have any power. Is He your strength? 
Are you trusting in him? Are you living for him? Is he your mind, your, your life, your mind, your goal? You've got to have all these things in order. He can be your strength. He'll help you through. Look at verse 13. You know the verse. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ. I, you know something? It's hard to defeat a person when they know where the power source is. If you know where the power source is, if you know where the right equipment is, it's hard to defeat somebody who knows and has the right power and where the power originates. Paul knew that his strength was in the Lord because he realized I'm in Christ and Christ is also in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Bible tells us. Do you know you got him living inside through the person of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. I read that verse in the very beginning of the message this morning and I uh, made reference to it this evening on therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and he's our power. Let's examine verse number 13. He said, I can. That's a bold statement. <laughs> I can. Uh, most of us say, I, I wish I could. I want to. I, I, I think I can. <laughs> Paul said, I can. If you're in Christ and Christ is in you, you ought to say, I can. I can wake up in the morning with a good attitude. Amen. All right. Even before you have Starbucks, you can wake up with a good attitude in the morning. You can wake up with a smile on your face. You can wake up with joy in your heart. I can. What a bold statement. Listen to it now. I can do. That word do, that's a believing statement. He said, I believe it. Yeah, listen, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. <laughs> and you got to believe. You say, well, why? Because Christ. <laughs> He's my life. He's my mind. He's my goal. He's my strength. I can do all things through Christ. And so he said this bold statement, I can. Believing statement. He said, do. How about this, all things. Two words, all things. That's a broad statement. So you got, a, you got a bold statement, a believing statement, do. He said, but I can do all things. That's a broad statement. Here it is, and here's the balance of all of it. You say, you got to have some balance in there. What's the balance? Through Christ. There's the balance of it all. I can't do anything in my own flesh. I pray every morning when I get up, God help me to prepare. When I get to Sunday, I say, God help me to preach. On Wednesday, I said, this Lord help me to make it there. <laughs> and like most of us on Wednesday, God just help me to make it there. But I, I, I can't do anything. You can't do anything without him. Can I have an amen? amen? What a statement. What a statement here. I can, bold statement, do, believing statement, all things broad statement through Christ that's balanced. Look at the basis of this statement. Which strengtheneth me. Huh. Paul said it again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in verse 10. He said, therefore I take pleasure in, infirmi in, in, in infirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecutions, distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. He said, because when I'm weak, God takes over. <laughs> Aren't you glad of that? When you're weak, God can take over. When you don't know which way to go, let God take over in your life. And Paul knew that he could do all things through the will of God and through the strength of Christ. Again, to give you that verse in Acts 17, 28, he said, for in him we live, we move, and have our being. I'm going to tell you what, listen, I can't do it without him. I can't get up in the morning without him. I can't live this life with him. I can't move without him. He is my very being. He is my life, my mind, my goal, and my strength. I was thinking about this when I was running for the devil and with the devil and doing what he wanted me to do. I was running in my physical strength. But all these many years, it's been a spiritual strength. It's been a help beyond measure to know that he's been there. In the mountaintops, in the valleys, times of good times or bad times, he's always been there. Glad times or sad times, Jesus has always been there. He's been my strength. He's my strength in all areas of my life. I wrote this down. This is a four-point outline that I think I heard Adrian Rogers say. 
He said, he said I, and of course he was using it in a different uh, context, but I think it'll fit right here. Uh, listen, he's my strength and he'll help me in all areas of my life, even as a partner, as a husband to my wife. He'll help me. Not only as a partner, but as a parent. He'll help me. He'll be my strength. As a parent, not only as a parent, but as a pastor. Amen. <laughs> he'll help me. And as a person, he'll help me along life's way. He can be our life. Christ, my life. Christ, my mind, my goal, and my strength. My purpose, my pattern, and my prize, and my power. Without Jesus, you'll have no life. Without Jesus, you'll lose your mind. <laughs> Amen. Without Jesus, you'll have no strength. And without Jesus, you'll never reach your goal in life. Why? Because he's Christ, and he's all I 